What's going on, growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tuck want to bring you along for a massive spring garden harvest. Let's go! Let's get right into the harvesting. We'll start things off with this keyhole raised bed right here. Come close and let me show you how amazing some of the stuff is growing. So check out this Lalo Rosa lettuce. These things are just massive and beautiful. And just listen to that. It's got that nice crisp to it. We're gonna grab one of these first to start things off. You can see now why I only planted about two per square foot because these things get pretty big. Look at the size of this. Look at the size of it compared to Tuck. Absolutely massive. I just love seeing this thing so much. Basically one lettuce per bowl. So I'm gonna have to grab a lot of stuff and then I'll show you everything at the end. Look at the size of these Bali red shard. Look at these leaves. We'll harvest a few of these leaves as well. Just absolutely massive, beautiful color on the stems too. The thing I love about gardening is not only does the food taste amazing, but the colors and just the beauty of the plants is absolutely stunning. So look at this head of lettuce also. Another beautiful head, we'll grab this one as well. But we got a bunch of stuff to grab here. Look at the size of that thing. Absolutely beautiful. Here's the flashy butter gem, that's what this one's called. And then let's grab some other things besides just lettuce. I'm gonna move around. You'll see some of the cabbage heads are starting to actually head up. The cabbages here, this is the early Jersey Wakefield cabbage. So we gotta grow the Jersey cabbage to stay true to our, our roots being in New Jersey. Come back here, let me show you this cauliflower head. You'll notice with the cauliflower head, I have a white one here. I'm taking the leaves and bedding them over the top because we don't want the cauliflower to get too much light or it'll start to turn green or brown. So. That's why we're covering this white cauliflower head. Let's just cut this thing out for our first cauliflower of the year. Not a huge head, but I've got some more cauliflowers that I have ready as well, so. We're just gonna harvest them periodically so we always have a harvest going. Beautiful. I've got some other heads that look even better though. And check out the size of this concept Botvian lettuce. Look at this, just absolutely beautiful. And more just incredible looking lettuce next to it. It looks just so beautiful. Now let's check out this birdies raised bed, which is doing fantastic also. This is the Melissa Savoy cabbage. It's starting to head up too. So we're gonna be patient and wait for a nice head on that one. But while we're waiting, we've got this Veronica Romanesca broccoli. Not the biggest head of broccoli, but absolutely stunning in the way it looks. So we're gonna harvest that one today and just snack on it. Again, not the biggest actual head, but still absolutely beautiful. And let me show you this cabbage, uh, this cauliflower right here. This is a purple variety. So the purple varieties, their leaves usually cover themselves, so you don't really have to bend the leaves over for the purple varieties, but the color is just stunning. Then look at this, <laughs> look at these lettuce. This thing is, just look at it, it's so dense, so beautiful, so we're gonna have to take one of these heads. This is the Forellen Schluss, I believe it's called. Look at that, I mean, it's like picturesque in my opinion. Tuck loves to see it too, homeboy. Huh but let's not just get veggies, let's move over to some fruit. The strawberries are, are in peak production. I'm talking pounds and pounds of strawberries just ready to be harvested. I gotta put some of this stuff down because I didn't get a bowl big enough. Let me just let you take a peek in here just to see the sheer number of strawberries. It just cracks me up, look at that. Oh my gosh. And the ones that are hanging up like this are so good because they don't touch the ground, they don't get any disease issues, but just take a peek at all the strawberries. But before we do that, look at the boss. This guy needs, this guy needs his fix in a cauliflower. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. He loves the brassicas. So the cauliflower is one of his favorites. He likes it more than the broccoli. But just look above his head. You can see we've got the red rocks down to trick the birds and then just, just the sheer number of strawberries. This is why the shucks and variety is my favorite. You've got these massive uh, oddly shaped strawberries, but the color is, I mean, the flavor is, it's nothing you can explain. You actually have to taste it yourselves. It's so dang good. And when you bite into the strawberries, all nice meat and juice, not hollow strawberries. And when you grow them yourself, you come out and pick them when they're completely ripe at the perfect level of ripeness. And when they're organic, you need them fresh right in the garden. All right, let's get, let Tuck keep snacking on that. We've got a lot more stuff to grab and a lot more things I wanna show you. So let's move over to the blueberries real quick. <laughs> so as our strawberries uh, pass 
their peak, the blueberries are gonna start setting up. Look at this, absolutely beautiful. And we already have some currants and stuff ready that we're gonna be harvesting today. So we're into just the level of production where you just try to have to keep up with everything. It's crazy. Look at this birdie raised bed that we just put in. Just looking excellent. And you'll notice we've got a lot of different flowers. This is the strawberry calendula, a beautiful flower, but also a good medicinal. So it's great when we get multiple uses out of things. And check out these cauliflower heads in here. These ones are a little bigger. Look at that. Just <laughs> beautiful. And check out this one as well. Oh man, you love to see it. Just excellent food. And hey, let's grab another lettuce over here while we're here. Some of our lettuce is actually going to flower. It's past, uh, ripe, or past the perfect time to grab it. We just have too much to, to eat. So we're trying to keep on top of it. A little smaller variety, but just absolutely beautiful and pretty nice one too. I got so many more things I need to show you. Let's go move over to some other beds. Come here for a sec. I wanna show you, this is my other variety of strawberries. It is just a grape producer as well. Look how much fruit is in here. So keeping up with picking them is getting to be a bit of a chore. But when it comes to strawberries, you should go out and pick them about every other day. And when you come out, you wanna make sure you remove all the bad strawberries or anything that's rotting. Just get it out of the garden before you start harvesting the good ones. Let me show you the, uh, the peas, which have done amazing this year. So I built this little box to cover, to keep my peas safe because the birds have just been destroying them through the years. Now that I'm keeping them off, the birds off, <laughs> the level of production is, uh, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, look at these purple peas. You'll love to see it. Uh, just an absolute wall of peas. Uh, you can, I can pick as many as I can possibly eat, but what I'm going to do is harvest all these peas and then pull the plants out and then plant cucumbers in. Because I love to plant the peas before the cucumbers because what happens is the peas will have uh, nitrogen nodules on their roots. So they take atmospheric nitrogen, store it on the roots and then put it into the ground. So we won't rip the pea roots out, we'll just cut them down and then we'll plant the cucumbers after that. So they'll have some natural fertilizer in the ground already. We've got a bunch of different flowers mixed in. Here's the chamomile. We love flowers that are, uh, you know, will produce a flower but are also good medicinal. So beautiful kale here, but I'll bring you over to some varieties of kale that I absolutely love. Before we get to some of those other kales, just take a peek around, I mean, the garden, you can see the, the whole food forest feel. And early, early spring, it doesn't look like it's gonna be full, but as the year starts to move on, you just start to notice that everything fills up, the spaces get uh, filled by food. That's what we wanna see. More cabbages on their way to heading up. Uh, more younger lettuce, carrots doing great. More lettuces, look at this, look at the beauty on this thing. Just absolutely stunning. You can't even paint a picture that pretty in my opinion. And then more cauliflowers. Let me come back over here because I want to grab one of the one of the lettuces over here too. And just take a peek at all the cabbages and just all the beds are absolutely full. Notice right down here we've got a bunch of radishes that are actually flowering. So we already harvested a lot of radishes. I'm letting some of the radishes go to seed because I like eating the pods on the top of the radishes. So they're actually pretty delicious. Look at Tuck. He found the carrots. So we're gonna, we're gonna get him a carrot. We'll harvest one for him so we can snack on his first carrot of the year. Let's grab this uh, head of lettuce right here though. Another bronze mignonette, beautiful, great producer. One of my favorite overall varieties. Absolutely beautiful. Check out the spinach right here. Just starting to flower, but still a lot of leaves. We're gonna harvest all the spinach today. It's just absolutely beautiful looking. And then we've even got some arugula that's doing well right here. Just to get that nice nutty and spicy flavor into our salads. We've got the King Tuck looking for some more carrots. We'll have to grab him one. And come check out the strawberry calendula when it's actually opened up. Look how beautiful of a flower this is. So I've done a much better job this year of adding some flowers into the garden. Like the Cosmos behind it too. This way we can bring in the pollinators and also bring in some uh, food for the butterflies and stuff. We love seeing the monarchs in the garden. Another head of broccoli right here. And then my favorite variety of kale right next to me here, the dazzling blue kale. It's just an incredible color. Look at Tuck pulling out a radish. He's got one of the French breakfasts. He doesn't want to wait for a carrot. Tuck, let me, you can, you can t t leave that boy because we're going to get you a carrot. Look at him. He's hilarious. <laughs> if I don't get him a carrot or something, he just grabs his own stuff. And check out some of these tomatoes. They're doing beautifully here. Like I mentioned, I've got this new board that I'm tying my tomatoes down to, but just look at the growth on them. 
These aren't even the healthiest looking tomatoes. These are the ones that are doing decent. You, uh, I gotta show you the ones in the pallet bed. They're, just, <laughs> they're doing so well. And here's a zinnia. So I've got a lot of zinnias planted to bring in those butterflies because it's a flower that the butterflies do like. And I just love that. It's like the red, red man cactus, I think it's called. And then this, another birdies raised bed where we have a bunch of cabbages that are all heading up as well. And then I've got a bunch of different kinds of flowers like asters planted in just to draw in all those pollinators. Let's move to the other food forest though. And I'm just walking by so many kinds of food, like the asparagus here, the grapes along the fence line. They're just not finished yet. Today we're focused on the things that actually have food on them. So coming to this garden, I want to show you that pallet raised bed like I was talking about. You got to see the health on the tomatoes in here. It's just, it's amazing. Look at the growth and the health on these tomatoes. I mean, these things are gonna be massive producers for us. This is like the 6th of June or something and we've got tomatoes looking this big, this beautiful. Definitely the best ever. We've got some carrots in here too. I wonder if we have any that are a decent size to give Tuck one. I doubt it, it's so early. Let's just see. I'm trying to feel around, see if I feel anything. This one's definitely too small. So it looks like no carrots ready yet. We've got this long one here in this bed. Here you go. He'll have this uh, just fresh long one. Let him snack on that. So there's his little carrot. Look at the size of some of the Swiss chard too. Beautiful. And then more flowers all mixed in. Let me bring you to some of the other raised beds where we've got a lot more food too. And I've got a cool candy cane mix, I think it's called, of uh, zinnias. Beautiful flower here. More cabbages, more kale more chamomile down there, lettuces that are ready. Let me check some of these carrots. I feel like these ones are further along. Here's a good one. Hey Tuck, want a carrot boy? So what's this? This looks like a white, yeah, the white satin carrot. So we've got a white variety. And I bet we have a, an orange variety too. So we'll let this guy snack on this. Or maybe even looks like the purple ones are ready. Let's try one of the cosmic purple carrots, see how those look. Now nah, they feel a little smaller. What about the uh, other variety we have back here? Atomic red carrot. Yeah, these ones are further along. Let's grab one of these. Here's the atomic red. Still small, but it's going to be a lot of food, food soon. His all-time favorite snack, so you're getting a picture of the first carrot of the year for the boss. If you guys love seeing him in the... Uh, in the videos, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and do not forget to spam some hearts down in the comments to just show your love for the boss right here. We love this guy. Let's keep moving though. Here we've got some celery that's right, getting close to being ready. It's tango celery. I haven't grown celery that many times, but it is growing beautifully, so I'm happy about that. Then as we come along on this side here, we've got more things really just getting close, like this cauliflower right here. So the cauliflower is ready before the cabbage is looking beautiful. And more carrots and stuff in here. So we make sure we have a lot of carrots planted because if we didn't, the boss would just be upset with us. Let me take you over to the peas we have in the back too because it's just more and more food. Just get a pan around though. Anywhere there's, anywhere there's steaks, there's tomatoes growing up them. Flowers mixed in. Just like I mentioned before, it might look a little empty right now. Give it a little bit of time. This is gonna be completely filled in. I want to show you what I have in this back corner. We've got sunflowers coming up, already getting huge. Tomatoes growing just absolutely beautifully. I've got some secret stuff in these crates that I'm keeping safe. I'll let you know about that stuff in the future. But just the tomatoes are doing great back here. We've got the tree that we just put in. And then so many peas ready back here. I mean, I couldn't even keep up with them. So I'm gonna harvest all of them today. Just absolutely beautiful. Let me grab harvest one of these real quick, just to show you. I love getting the fresh peas out of them when they're, uh, when they're this size, because the peas are so sweet. They, you have to try it if you've never had fresh peas like this. It actually tastes like candy. The amount of sugar in them is just crazy because the sugars haven't converted to starch or anything. So it's just so sugary. Amazing. So we've got to harvest a bunch of those. Let's keep moving though. I want to grab some fresh fruit. We've got cur white currants that are ready. So let's move over to those. More asparagus coming up. We've got the comfrey down here, also known as bone knit, a great permaculture plant. So we've had this planted for years. 
Right above that, we've got blackberries that are starting to fatten up. These are one of the fruits that take a, a good amount of time to actually ripen. They take a long time to finish. Come over here though. I wanna show you the currants. Grab some of these. This is my favorite variety of currant by far. This is the white currants. Look how many are on there. The trusses are just loaded with fruit. Look at this. Take a look at that. I mean, the amount of fruit is just crazy. Go, go down too. It's just, oh, let me grab some. They're so good. They have like this tangy flavor and a little bit of sweetness too. Definitely my favorite variety of currant. A good amount of seeds in it, but the flavor is just so good. Mm. And the plants are incredibly productive. The uh, grapes this year have a, an incredible amount of grapes on them. You'll see by the trusses up here. This is the Niagara grape, and I also have the Catawba too, but you could just see the sheer number of grapes. And you'll notice the amount of light that's coming through. That's because I went around and cut out a lot of the big fan leaves. I just remo removed some of those leaves just so the uh, fruit can get direct sunlight and a good amount of airflow, which is super important for your grapes. Underneath me here, we've got some lemon balm. We like to let this come up just to bring in some pollinators. And then probably my favorite perennial flower, the echinacea. I talk about that a lot, but it's just, not only does it have beautiful flowers, brings in the pollinators, but it's also a great medicinal. So what I'm gonna do now is go around, harvest a lot of the stuff, and then I'll just put it onto a table and show you guys what it all looks like at the end, because me just sitting there harvesting the same thing for a while gets a little bit monotonous. Some of these carrots in here are doing good too. You'll notice we have carrots and all different plants at different stages. This way we can stagger the harvest so we don't have too many things all at once. But there comes a point in time, like right now, when the things just come a little too fast so that I have to harvest a bunch of stuff and then I'll just, if I can't eat it all, I'll just end up giving it away. That's a fun part too. We gotta grab a bunch of these kales and stuff too. We gotta try to keep up with how much they're producing. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck love making these videos so much because the harvest videos are kind of like our proof to you that a lot of the things that we're sharing with you actually work. When I look at the health of some of the tomatoes and how well the system's working, and then I also just take a quick look back as you guys can just take a step back and just get a whole overview of the forest, you can see that the whole system works well together. Not only is it producing a whole lot of food, but being in a garden like this is so much fun because it's like you're part of a system. You can go into the heart of the garden, which is a forest, hang out in the shade of trees while you're, out, while you're harvesting all different kinds of fruits and vegetables. So not only is this something that provides you with a lot of food, but it provides me and Tuck with an insane amount of joy. This guy loves when the chipmunks come in so he can scare them all off. He loves getting rid of the squirrels and it'd be tough to do it without the boss right here. He's always out here, he's always dedicated and he always makes everything we do so much more fun. So me and Tuck wanted to thank one of our new channel members before we let you go. We wanted to thank Leanne Noble. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for contributing. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing back here. Me and Tuck have always wanted to just grow food and share with everyone the joy that we have for growing the food. Uh, people ask a lot of times what we do with the extra stuff. We end up just giving it away to friends and family because it's not only about the harvest and storing it for me. I just get so much satisfaction out of the whole entire process of things. So we just love, we just love planting and we love growing. That's why we have the merch grow because that encapsulates everything we love to do in the backyard, in the channel and just Growing is it's one of our absolute passions. If you guys do enjoy the video though, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. There's also gonna be exclusive summer merch coming out. I'm so excited to share it. It's definitely my favorite design that we've ever had. So when we get that summer merch on out, just, I am excited to show everybody. But for, look, check out this boss before we let you go. We're gonna sign out with a tuck. This guy's ear is getting a little itchy. Sometimes this time of year he gets a little bit of an earache, but he's really a beast. He stays strong and we just love sharing everything we do with you guys. So, Tuck and James, we'll be back to you again real soon. We out.